Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Matthew Fish Stewart. Joining me is Bryce Egypt Paul and Jake Sponsorberry. We're casting here the grand finals of Split One 2017 of the OPL and Diwals in 23 minutes were able to take game one over Legacy. And that's a commanding victory. Mm. I mean, if you're Shern, you get your best champion, you have to chuckle a little bit. I mean, 23 minutes, he's done exactly what he said he was going to. And Direwolves, I mean, we don't speak about this a lot, but Shern, this is his rookie split. He hasn't mm. played anywhere. He played o uh, NACS oh, yeah. overseas. But as far as, like, competitive leagues, this is his first time. He's got to the grand final, and he had a cracker of a first Slight game. roast on the NACS, calling it not a competitive league, but... Ooh, oh, he's small. not all right. And Come I think on, mate. I don't buy any challenges here. He's, that's That's... Not oh. for me. All right, but I think for Diawals, if I was honestly predicting this series, I would think that Diawals are going to take it 3-1. But if you're going to 3-0 a series, like that is the game that starts it off, right? Like that was a very convincing victory. They took the Ivan away from Carbon and they just absolutely roasted Legacy. And I think the big thing for me was that they attacked the rookies. I mean, they went yeah. at the confident rookies, but Lost and Cupcake had an absolutely miserable time in that bottom lane. And that is like not only a good move, like strategically, Taking out the rookies, like, mentally, is huge. And yeah. this is the pillar of strength for Legacy as well. The bottom lane of Lost and Cupcake, very few games in the OPL regular season have we seen them underperform. We are back into picks and bans for game number two between Legacy and Diewolves. This time, Legacy will be on the red side of Summoner's Rift. Sorry, blue side of Summoner's Rift. As Zyra, Cannon, and Karma are banned up by Legacy with Victor, Ivan, and Brom hitting the bench here. And Immediately, all. Legacy, whoa, taking Ash, but Graves as well as Fizz picked up by the Diewolves. That's a flex. Oh, you reckon you can play yep. mid lane, Fantix? Yeah, I reckon Fantix has always been a good Fizz. Um, and picking it this early, I feel like you wouldn't just blind pick Fizz at this stage, right? I mean, they ballsy. do think that that is the best top laner. I mean, uh, Flares has been willing to blind pick it. Tally blind picked it one game as well into Flares. I think that teams do really value it as a top laner. Mm -hmm. And we've been kind of theorizing all week, like what does well into it? I know Jish, coach, assistant coach of the Mortals right now, thinks that Gragas is a really good counter pick into it. I have some opinions that, you know, maybe you can run a Rumble or a better Renekton uh, if you have a slightly better early game and What's don't a die better a better Renekton? Two. Uh, R Renekton that didn't start 0-1-0 when oh. 10 CS down. Okay. <laughs> Shout All out right. to Swiper. Yeah. I mean, before <laughs> that game, I remember him watching that matchup, and he, and it, like, before we went to the studios, he was watching, I think it was Marin play Renekton into Fizz and just, like, stomping him, and then uh, it's got a bit unlucky, well, I guess. Both times we've seen Fizz picked into Nautilus, and that's going to be the matchup here today. Fizz unless... has absolutely <laughs> destroyed him. He's like turret <laughs> over, but level yeah. 3. Unless Nautilus is picked up as a support by Cupcake, it's Ooh. not going to be a strong matchup for Tally. Oriana is locked in again for Legacy in the mid lane, and King will pick up Varus one more time. Rosie doesn't play in the OC OPL anymore, mate. That's going to be a Var uh, sorry Nautilus yeah. top lane. I've, no one else. Has anyone else played I mean, Nautilus support? Okay, if anyone was going to play Nort support in the OPL Grand Final, it would be Cupcake, but... Uh, <laughs> Nord is just, okay, in my eyes, Nautilus is just the squishiest support tank you've ever seen. Like, everyone tells me that Nautilus is like a fat tank and sit in the front lines and take lots of damage. He actually, he just dies. I don't know, he doesn't get items, he builds redemption, he builds a locket, and he just dies. Well, with Ivan being banned out by the Die Wars as well as first picking Gragas, they're going to be able to ban out Lee Sin here against Carbon. So I have to see if there's a Rengar ban coming up next. Well, this is the thing I've been talking about a lot, <laughs> is that when you pick a farming jungler, the one thing you don't want is a buff to buff jungler to get two successful ganks off early mm -hmm. and win the game. Because what you're aiming for is like, even if they do gank, you're saying, I can farm up and they will not be effective because uh, the ganks will just fail. But we've seen time and time again with Juve, he falls behind 30 CS and then still gets the two ganks off and his team wins the game. So I think that's why they took away the lease in. They don't want Ooh. the strongest buff to buff to come out. There still is a lease as well if mm. they want to go for yeah. it. And Karzik's actual ban coming out from Dio. So a lease, Rengar still left open for Legacy. But one thing that surprises me is four support bans from Legacy during this pick ban phase. Zyra, Karma, the first two. Malzahar and Lulu follow up from them. Yeah, they're just, they're just getting rid of all the staple supports. I feel like at this stage, this is... In my eyes, Legacy buckling down. On oh, it is! Ooh. Whoa! It's a Nautilus support! Shen has been picked up by Legacy to head into the top lane, and we get a Rengar as well. Cupcake is gonna be thrown oh. out the anchors today. It's gonna be the squishiest Nautilus. No, no, no. I think, <laughs> as I was saying, right, they're banning out all of the staple mage supports that are good in the meta. They ban the Zara, ban the Karma, Malzahar, Lulu. They want Destiny to play something uncomfortable and something that doesn't just get priority on a tank like Nautilus. And I think, I mean. Nami. Yeah, Nami. What else is left? Nothing. Yeah. We legitimately talked about it. In my opinion, 
Nami is Destiny's weakest champion. I think that he's had very good games on the Karma. I think his Lulu last game was also incredibly good. I mean, if you watch the early push, he was hitting Glitter Lancers on two members most of the time. But I think that his Nami has actually been a little bit lackluster. So I think that that is something that Legacy had scouted and now are forcing him to play a very squishy support against the champion with the most CC in the game. And I mean, Nami just has sustain. Gee, Nami bullies around lanes by casting the ebb and flow on like on the enemies to bully him out and then on the allies to heal it up. And sustain just isn't useful if a Nautilus is just going to hook you in the face, it yep. got you, and you're just going to die. And the other thing I was going to mention is Shen is a good matchup into Fizz because so much of Fizz's yeah. early trading is the auto reset auto with the W available. If Shen gets the dodge zone down, it is very good. Uh, and I think that they kind of baited Direwolves there by not to not attacking the top lane champion pool by picking the Nautilus early and they're thinking, okay, that's going top, no longer need to ba ban the Shen out. And I'll so pick. Something we talk about from Soul Strikes all the time. Really good at uh, able to go through these pick and ban phase for Legacy, but you were mentioning Cupcake? Yeah, Cupcake just he's just turned into a cheese lord. Yeah. He's just playing Trundle, <laughs> he's playing Nautilus, he plays full AP, no sidestone, no uh sorry, full AD, no sidestone, no pink ward MF. It I is. don't know. I, I, I honestly was going to say it. It seems like they just want the unorthodox matchup. They yeah. want it to be a little bit more kill lane. They want it to be that, you know, if you make a mistake, that you get put very far behind. And credit to Direwolves last game. They rose to that occasion. But they just seem to keep going back to it. I do want to criticize him, though. He has chosen the uh, Warden Nautilus skin, and that is just an absolutely <laughs> rookie mistake. Where is it on the tier list? Uh, the yellow one. I'm not sure what, what it's called. Big Swip says it has 5% increased range on the hook, and then Default <laughs> Nautilus has 5% increased health. He's just tankier. Is and then Warden is just at the bottom. No, no buffs he's just, to Warden. Yeah, he, just, he doesn't get anything. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> oh, this is great having Egypt here, because he's able to go through all the support uh, skin tier lists yep. <laughs> for all the champions. But Warden, not good. <laughs> we are into game two here between the Die Walls and Legacy. Cupcake, he's picked up Nautilus. Something we've theorycraft before on, on the show spot. I mean... Bond of Stone, really good for champions of crowd control. Nautilus can pick up that um, Keystone Mastery now. Certainly can. Chippy has also made a crucial mistake in Egem's book oh, because no. the rule is if a champion has a Chroma, you have to play the Chroma. Yep. And unfortunately, Chippy's has a rain jacket on, so that means he is not playing yellow uh, Fizz. Oh, oh no. Tally is actually going to get caught Tally. out here. Very deep into the Direwolf side the of the jungle. He's going to have to flash away here because there's a Fizz <gasps> right behind. <gasps> does he flash? He He's does. Oh, him. They go over. They go over. Shenfire, oh. take it down for first blood. And it's Karma that picks up the kill. And Shun is not happy. If you saw the player cam, Shun was out of his seat nearly. He has just been baited in so hard. And they've given Carbon the first blood. This is the start legacy we're looking for. My goodness, what a big start coming out from Legacy. We were meant to go to an interview with Soul Strikes there. I'm not even sure if we have that anymore because First Blood Trust immediately me, picked up by the Sherpa jungler. Is just running around, uh, sorry, Soul Strikes is just running around in circles at the moment. <laughs> that is a perfect start. Absolutely. I think jungle is also just absolutely the best role to get First Blood on. And then Carbon just gets a extra long Ooh. sword. He's going to be able to bully around the graves if he finds him maybe. And uh, just his clear speed will be a lot better. So he'll be slightly slower to start, but yeah. that long sword should True. help him out progress throughout the jungle later on. There is a flash burn on Tally though, and no ignite in the bottom lane. Very, very low cooldown on ignite though. Yeah, uh, the ignite I think is honestly pretty important. Direwolves got to the bottom lane first because Legacy were obviously uh, doing things in the top side map, getting the first blood. But uh, so they're going to get to the lane late, miss a few creeps maybe, and then Dial's just going to bully them out and they're not going to have the ignite to be able to force an all-in. And Courage of the Colossus picked up for Cupcake. I mean, I'm sure we're yeah. going to get the masteries uh, put up on our screen soon, huh. but it looked like that time around he swung the anchor, got a small shield, so yeah. don't think he's actually going with the Stone Brothers or Bond of whatever the heck it's called anymore. That is... We change strange. names on silly ab abilities all the time, <laughs> and I just lose track. I mean, it makes sense. We see Leonis pick it up all the time. Tally's in range of getting Dove here. Very dangerous. That's a big wave. He's Raves is two. on his side of the jungle, and he obviously has Ignite available on uh, top lane Fizz for Chippies. Obviously, you would think Carbon's pathing up to this side, so I understand their initial hesitancy. <laughs> but if the next wave goes into turret, Tally's dead. Yeah, let's see what Tally can do. He's got no potions available, no corrupting potions for Chippies either, but does, like you mentioned, have the Ignite top side of the map. Carbon is clearing the blue buff side of the jungle for Die Wars. Now he's trying to just sneak into the bottom lane. Very low. Some of the spells are available. There's oh. a hook of the king. Locks him down. Exhaust straight away on towards the Rengar. Ebb and flow keeps him alive there. Void the bubble. So some of the spells burnt. Flash still available for Nami. Carbon didn't jump out of the brush. Yeah. Was he too far away? Yeah, it looked like he was. It looked like he A-clicked and then walked out and then tried to get back in. 
They also kind of stacked their CC. They threw the hook, and you know that the Varus is going to flash after he gets hooked. And then Carbon just threw the net, so they didn't have the slow to be able to uh, catch up to him after he flashed away. Yeah, but at the same time, I mean, that's pretty much every summoner spell yeah. burnt in what we said mm -hmm. was the kill lane side of the map for Legacy. We still have to give Chippy so much credit. I mean, one thing I have said in the past about Chippies is not really the biggest game player for Direwolves in finals in the past yeah. has struggled against Tally, but this time has gone well and truly toe-to-toe -to -toe with the top laner of Legacy and come out the better. I think with the Direwolves boot camp in Korea, I honestly, Chippies was one of the... Uh Strongest players coming out of I think he improved the most, and I think he's come back and he's shown other top laners that he's uh, forced to be reckoned with. You guys say that about Swiper when he goes overseas as well. Is it just going overseas and top laners getting better the most <laughs> rapidly? <laughs> well, oh, okay, I'm going to roast the OPL right now, just, just as a journal. I think top lane is probably one of our weakest uh, roles in terms of talent, and uh, going overseas, playing against big name players in NA solo queue, e EU West solo queue, like Korean solo queue, uh, top laners just have like the most to learn. And honestly, the top laners in our region, all of the good ones have really good mentalities when it comes to learning, and I think they improve a lot. There you go. So far, Tally not having the great laning phase against Chippy so far as we bullying him out on the top side of the map. We did move into the mid lane then where Fantix missing a few combos here against Claire, which has been punished quite heavily, but he does call upon Shurnfire to shove out this way for him. And this is one thing Shurn does mm -hmm. actually better than any jungler in the OPL, yeah. in my Ooh. opinion. When his laners call him in, I need to push this out because otherwise I'm going to get ganked, dove and killed. Uh, Shuren is there in a heartbeat. I mean, he is more than willing to tax a whole wave, which uh, lots of junglers are willing to do. Uh, but I think it's the right team move. Honestly, big mistake from Fantix there, I think. Getting his recall cancelled. Yeah. yeah, greedy. Yeah, greedy base. Now he actually doesn't get the reset, which uh, Shurnfire showed on the map for him to get. Uh, big mistake. Yeah, and Shurn, potentially, now that his wolves have been taken away, actually has to go mid again. Oh, oh Carmen, oh, no. you don't want to be there. He's been spotted out. Misses out the bowler Actually strike? calls in. No, he hit that one. Uh, actually called in Cupcake. So, bold move, uh -huh. given the fact that Ash was pushing up to the turret. So I was going to mention, when Shurnfire is pushing up mid lane there, he just ticked level 5, while Carbon was still 3, only just hitting level 4, so slightly under level at the moment against the Graves. Yeah, but at the same time, Fantix has sacked half a minion wave worth of uh, experience now, so Orianna's going to have 6 earlier. And you have to watch for the Orianna all in. Even though Ori's taking barrier, there's just, ooh, ooh, Fantix. That's a lot of damage, Claire. Incredibly low. No mana available for Fantix, and there is barrier available for Claire. He has hit level 6. Is he trying to shove out the wave? Fantix looks like he's about to tick 6 soon as well. Claire shouldn't have thrown that Q. If he got it just left, the wave shoves oh. itself back. Probably still will, but he's lost a couple more. If, uh... That's interesting. Yeah. She's going to leave. Mm -hmm. They know exactly where Shurn is, because yeah. he's walked over three wards. So they can technically leave. They, they must be like on the cusp of like Lost Chapter's boots or Claire. something like that, because both of them are overstaying incredibly hard in that mid lane. Claire's not leaving. He's going to be able to pick up this wave underneath the turret. Shurn fires deep into Carbon's jungle. Blast cones over the wall, and it's going to be able to try and take Krugs away. Carbon's on the complete wrong side of the map. Shurn fire has not been spotted out yet. I think for Legacy this game, Bot lane was just an absolutely disastrous situation for the last game. But this game, honestly, the Shen TP or the Shen ulti, level 6 with the Rengar ulti, that's going to be the big play. They're going to look for the Nort Hook. They're going to look for the Ash Arrow once they hit 6. And uh, that's going to be the big play. That's either Legacy going to win and they're going to blow open the bot turret and blow open the map, or Dials are going to counter it um, with a Fizz TP, maybe Fantix roaming down. Well, this so, is so is that what it's about? Getting priority in the top lane, getting priority yeah. in the mid lane, making sure you're pushing. So if they are making that play, it's more desperation than anything else? Yeah, absolutely. I think Shurnfire is making the right move right now, sitting in the bot side jungle, taking away the red buff. He's got a lot of vision. That's two wards around the red. He's got one in the bot bush behind uh, Legacy's bot lane. Oh. oh, Carbon. Not able to get the smite down there. It's actually Shurnfire blew that one early. Yeah, so Carbon, Carbon didn't have, didn't smite. have smite. A little bit risky, actually, from Shurnfire. Maybe some nerves there. Yeah, stop roasting the Legacy Jungler when he <laughs> didn't even have the spell available. <laughs> Sorry. That's, that's just not... That's got, he's in the grand final, mate. Leave him alone. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but for now, things are dead even between Legacy and Direwolves. 10,800 gold apiece. This is actually one of the first games where we've seen Fizz not getting incredibly far ahead on the top stunner map. It's fairly even between the two. He still has a slight CS lead, but it is pushing against Tally at the moment. And uh, as you see, Carbon going on the Scuttle Crab now, he's just pathing towards the top side. I think he's, I think I want Carbon to help Tally push in the top wave, Tally get a reset off, and then look to make this play bot lane once they hit the six spike. But there's an all in the top side of the map. There's the fish being used by Chippy. He's diving in towards oh. Tally. Does he get the kill? Yes, he does. He dashes back in. Carbon now is going to have to try and hunt him out. Flash over oh. the wall. There's a teleport. Will he get him in time? Yes, he will. Carbon takes down Chippy. And that's the kind of play you have to be willing to make if you're Carbon. I mean, flashing the wall, no hesitation. Yeah. He wanted the kill, wanted the trade. Now, Tally 
can actually teleport back top, and Chippies doesn't have it available. So Tally can catch that huge wave, shove it as far as he can, recall straight away, then look for the teleport play bottom lane, because yep. Carbon now has his ulti. That's actually a really great 1v1 play yeah. for Chippies, but not a death sentence yet for Legacy. Considering Tally just got solo killed, I think he's actually in a decent position. Like, I don't, <laughs> How I feel like stupid is that to say, <laughs> yeah, though? Because Chippies so has weird. just absolutely destroyed him. Yeah. Should have cost him a big creep wave, but mm -hmm. because of Carbon's positioning on the map, Legacy actually might get something back. A very micro point here is that the fact Chippies did cancel his teleport, didn't get cancelled by Carbon, so that will oh, come yeah. up slightly faster, but still, as a shed. And also, oh. Direwolves have oh. read the play. That is, This is a fantastic yep. map movement. They're going to attack the person with teleport now because they know they're at a disadvantage. If they get any form of CC, they might even kill Tally. And that's going to be first brick. Although we'll see whether Legacy have read it in response. Yep. With Chibi's going that aggressively, I mean, you must be able to read this play. Oh, there's the ultimate coming out from Varus. Tidal Wave does not connect. Tally will still escape. Direwolves do have the push going on the top side of the map, though. The spider senses just go off yeah. in that situation. That's a fantastic play out of Direwolves. They're still going to deny a huge creep wave. But when Chippies comes back into lane and just cues on you immediately, yeah. you're like, something isn't right here. Yeah, also, <laughs> I mean, we were talking about Direwolves and the uh, creep waves, and then the bot lane was just hitting the turret and nobody yeah. was farming it. So I feel like Tally had an inkling that it was happening. And also, like, the Varus ulti landed literally like two frames after Tally had cast his E. Oh, they're jumping into each other. That's a level six. Mm. Rengar gets a level eight graves. Carbon is going invisible, does deliver Tally into the bottom lane, but still, that is not fun if you're Carbon. Hey, perfect situation for Tally. He's just picked up a whole great wave. <laughs> Didn't yeah. have teleport to get down there unless Carbon nearly died. Are they trying to dive from here? Shurfire's getting but some damage down. I think that's ooh, I think that's two situations in a row where we've just said, you know, Direwolves have completely outplayed their opponent, just micro-wise, and now have the macro rotation as well. No wave clear going to be coming out of Tally. He has to back off from this one. It's a race, though, for first brick. They've got yeah, four they've members won, for Direwolves. Absolute mile, Fish. Yeah. They're going to be able to take this one down in the bottom lane. Yeah. Legacy only half health, top side maps. So first brick. They actually might get tier two They're gonna here. They're going to go again. Two. Because look at mid lane. So all of a sudden, Fantix cheats into bottom fog of war. Claire can't get down there to defend. Ooh. And they've got three members, four when you count the Nami, already hitting tier two, and Cupcake's teleport, uh, base back is just too late. They lose the maximum again here, Legacy. They just don't have the read on the turret push. Yeah, and that's a red buff Graves as well. Oh, I, I guess it's just fallen off now, yeah. but that's that's a very quick push. I think Darwis can probably get the Earth Dragon as well. Big. Talk, it's talking about a last game. Oh, now they're going to get the reset. I guess they value the tempo more, right? Like, yeah. it's, a, it's a decision that you have to weigh up. Or like, we want to get the reset and then deploy on the map before Legacy can answer us, or we can take the greedier play, take the Earth Dragon and get the slower reset. And I think the reason they make that play is Carbon potentially looking mid now is because the bounce came out of loss. And as soon as you see the bounce, you know that someone's going to collect the wave. Yeah. And it gives you an easier point Ooh, cool. Barra, to shove That's in why. from. That's the other option you can go for, is just fire something straight down mid and yeah. try and break the map open. If all loss fails, just run it down mid. <laughs> you got a you got a hook, you got an arrow, you got a Rengar ult. I mean, you don't have a Rengar ulti right now, but you yeah. got a Shen ult, Rengar ult, like... They've got a lot of just You raise a good buttons. point. Maybe they should have just flashed Nord ulti, because then you know yeah. where the arrow is going to land. Yeah. Uh, Nord ulti is one of the biggest uh, like hard counters. It's, it's a big just it's stuff terrifying. you to everyone. It is actually terrifying, because it's on the delay. You know you're screwed, <laughs> yeah. but it's just like, dunk, 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 just charging <laughs> down, and like you just get bopped up at the end into the arrow. Like, What do you do? Well, taking stock of things at the moment, it's about a 500 gold lead for the Dire Wars even though they have a turret advantage and a first turret picked up already. A lot of the gold currently is sitting on Shurnfire at 74 yeah. CS. He's 4,100 gold. Still only even with Carmen, but does have an experience advantage. He's, in fact, moving to the top side of the map. Legacy have a big minion wave to deal with. Cupcake's going to take up a lot of this oh. damage. Hooks away. Ultimate did go through. Throws out his own, trying to lock them down. And Rengar wants to get on top of this in the top lane, but won't be able to jump in. Yeah, that's a little bit of a bad ult out of Carbon, I think. He's on vision. He's going to try and sneak in. I just don't think there was a response play because there's no arrow available from Lost. Already used it. He's still on vision. Oh, Shurnfire dashing it aggressively. Tidal Ooh. Web comes out. Hook not going to connect from Cupcake. Oh, Piercing arrow is doing a lot. Good bubble onto Lost. He's forced to heal. Legacy slowly bleeding out top side of the map. And this is what I was talking about. Diewolves individually just seem to have the better of Legacy mm -hmm. right now. Every little micro interaction I mean, miss hook, bubble lands. All of a sudden, you've got all the damage turn around there. Carbon waiting on top of a ward. Shurn turns around, pops him a little bit. Direwolves are just punishing like the tiniest mistakes out of Legacy, and they're walking away scot-free. 
And I guess that's kind of the story of this game, right? Like, everything Legacy has tried to do, Dials have predicted, and they've just been there slightly earlier, but it's slightly better, and they're just coming out on top, like, across the map. And it's weird, because that's with First Blood and what we thought would be tempo early. Yeah. Over on Legacy's favor. Well, they've just kind of wasted the Rengar and Chen ulti. Every time that has been up and they've had the arrow, like they, they've had all of the tools, all their big go buttons that I was talking about to make the play, something something happens, Carbon gets caught by Schoenfire on the bottom side of the map and then has to blow the Shen ulti. He blows the Rengar ulti to get away, blows the Rengar ulti again top lane to like try and get a cheeky kill, but they just they just can't. And to me, that's when you have to be willing to gamble. You have to be willing yeah. to say, you can take our oh, top lane turret. Aramid, Fantix not going to get connected as he uses the ghost to get away as well. Good baller strike, slows it down a little bit, but Top side of the map, Die Wolves have taken down another outer turret for themselves. No response from Legacy yet. And even though that seems like a fine play, I still think they should just be making the play in the lane that Ash is in. Nord ult someone, yeah. Ash arrow them when well, you know they're going to be knocked up. I mean, you can't do it against yeah. Fizz. That's a given. But as I said, I would have preferred to see them say, we're going to take the chip, lane on top, uh, chip damage on top lane turret. It can even go down but we're going to use all four ultis simultaneously when Arrow is back available, we'll get the three kills, and then push something else. And they're just not willing to do that. This game, the way I look at it, is Die Wolves are playing like the finesse game, right? Yep. Like, they're getting chips all over the map. They they have all these champions that are just going to slowly accrue the leads, and Legacy just have the ARAM comp. They have the big buttons that they need to press, so, like, at a certain point, they're just, like, kind of slowly bleeding out. Oh, here we go. That's this ambitious. is spotted out. Karma's looking for oh, the fight. Johnson. Johnson. Right, Knocked cancel back there. immediately and teleport cancelled by Chippies, but Legacy now have five members mid lane. I mean, they should be able to get the turret, but really what they were looking for is a kill and turret oh, and no, they don't. Big collapse coming out from Die Wars. Chippies from the top side of the map. Nami's right behind Legacy. Shonfire looking to dash in. That's oh, a flash. Missed ball. again. Just ult. Misses. Destiny still gets jumped up by Carbon. Throws out the ultimate. Carbon really, really low. King picks up a kill. And Legacy, they're falling like flies here as the Die Wars will collapse. And Die Wolves individually, they're just going to continue to push through. Cupcake going to fall down very low here. Oh, so close. Piercing Arrow doesn't connect. Good sidestep from Cupcake. He's still trying to run Chippies away. Have but got him. I mean, there's absolutely here. nowhere he can go fish. And on an individual level, Dire Wolves are just outplaying Legacy. They are outclassing Legacy right now. That was just such an overcommit by Legacy. I got caught up in the hype too, honestly. I thought they were going to get the turret, but then Dire Wolves just reacted really quickly. They were all rotated from both sides, and that sort of flank when they, they half committed on the Nami because they didn't get the engage, and yep. then Nami just waves through the entire team with a Fizz coming from the flank, a Graves coming from the flank. Honestly, Shurnfire, in my eyes, is kind of a flanking jungler. He's just a cheeky bugger that gets in your back line. Yeah, and he'll like flash on you, use the Q, use the ult, do a ton of damage. Let's take another look at this, because I feel like the ult needs to come out before the hook. Destiny needs to be immediately popped, because yeah. all you've done, if you don't do that, is they can't run through Destiny and King, and then your back line just gets absolutely destroyed mm -hmm. by the Graves, by the Syndra, by the Fizz. And because they didn't commit hard enough to one side and really break the pincers, then they just get eaten alive. And that is exactly what happened in that situation. I'm still a little bit confused by Legacy because they're trying to make that forced play mid lane. Carbon jumping in way too deep. Yeah. Legacy just on the back foot there. No ultimate from the Shen, no ultimate from Rengar. Sitting ducks at the moment. And now Dialwolves had the first true and meaningful lead of this game. 3,000 gold up ahead of Legacy. And I still think that Legacy are just underestimating their comp. Really, Nort ult, Flash Nort ulti there onto King means there's absolutely nothing to do. He is up Creek without a paddle, like whatever analogy <laughs> you want to use. And the they're going <laughs> to... Shit Creek. <laughs> and they're going to break open mid lane turret as well now. Uh, like Legacy at every turn has just been completely outplayed. Yep. And they're looking to try to take mid lane inner as well. Two, two, turrets, two turrets and a kill. Uh, oh, Tally tried to dash out of that one. Oh, Not going to connect. Oh. Good shock wave. They're going to try and hook them down. Big tidal wave though. He's going to knock up both Cupcake and Carbo. Oh. Cupcake's going to pay for that one. As King goes on a killing spree. 3-0-1. This and is two games in a row with this flip of Shady Carry and it just yeah. hasn't worked out. He catches up a little bit, but they just get punished mega hard on the other side of the map. Yeah, and that's what I was going to say. Sure, you're up 10 CS now. You took a turret. Yeah. You've got all that solo gold, but King all of a sudden is 3-0-1 and he's knocking down every turret around the map. It's a 5,000 gold lead. And uh, Dire Wolves just... They've been caught by two big shockwaves and because... AD no carries there. there, no one cares. It's also Ash, right? Like, this isn't a Vayne or like a Twitch or like some late game scaling AD carry. Like, Ash does scale well, but in the mid game, in the early game, she's just an arrow bot. They re like just rely so much on that Ash arrow, and she's just not there to, to pull it off. Die was just going to continue to increase their goal lead. Now, 5,000 gold up just 17 minutes into the game. Not looking good for Legacy right now. And that's what we're talking about. I mean, you're Equal in CS, you're down 1,200 gold. I yep. mean, that's what it means when you're not grouping and King's able to get it. And I, 
I just want to go back to the fact that I don't even think they outscale. They just have an ease of execution comp where everyone presses R and you win or lose the fight. Well, yeah. they're trying to press all their R buttons here in the bottom lane against Chippies. Oh. Three oh, members sick. down. He avoids some crowd control, but does get locked down. Legacy get an easy kill down here. That stalls. Stalls for time. I think, honestly, one big thing I want to talk about right now, Destiny. I'm really going to commend him on this. I think this is really smart. Most Namis, most Zyras, most mage supports right now are upgrading the Spell Thief into uh, the blue sidestone. The yep. name uh, has... Whatever not, it's called. Yep, yeah, whatever it's called. But he's gone. I think it's because they're versing the Ash, right? He wants the Crucible so he can save his teammates. So he goes for the early Ruby Sidestone so that he's a little bit tankier, so that he's less of a target, so that he can survive just a little bit longer. He's not going to have any damage, but I mean, like, he's a Nami, so who really cares? And then, uh, yeah, I think the Crucible with that pickup is just really smart here. And what that means is all of a sudden, ooh, big fight in the mid lane. Cupcake's getting a Shen Ultimate. Cool. They lock down Shurnfire. Nice. Do they get the kill? They do. Lost gets it early and survives the burst of Syndra, who gets pulled back by a Shockwave, but does flash away as Legacy still trying to charge down mid lane. Forced to retreat as Chippies is looking for the re-engage. But I want to go back to it. What an outplay out of Fantic. Mm. Ooh, again, Bubble connects halfway through a dash. Dime was still going to try and fight this, but Legacy forced to back away. I think any other mid laner in the OPL just leaves themselves for dead there. Fantix outplays, gets a flash off, turns around, even dishes out some cheeky damage. And the collapse was nearly there. That was, once again, Direwolves pretty close to picking up a teamfight win if the clean disengage didn't come out. So good catch from Legacy, but Direwolves are really upping their gameplay. Certainly are. It is some breathing room for Legacy. Now they're only 4,000 gold behind. So those two picks they've got so far have caught up slightly in gold. But what Ejim was saying is once this Crucible comes through, yeah. those picks stop. Whew. I mean, all of a sudden the Ash Arrow is no longer that fearsome tool. You're really relying on Nort. And Cupcake, unfortunately, isn't playing oh. the best Nautilus game I've seen so far. Yeah. Uh, so it just becomes less reliable to get those big engages that Legacy really need to continue to fight their way back in. It just becomes Carbon's job. It's just the Rengar Shen at that point. As soon as the arrow is kind of a non-factor with the Crucible, it's just uh, like a Nord hook is pretty ambitious. I think getting that off, Diawals have to misplay quite heavily. That was a... That was They're still hunting bait. though. So two people have gone back to base. Flash Torn doesn't connect for Tally and Fantix. Oh, oh no. Oh, that's the it fourth hurts. or fifth time we've seen that from Cupcake. Flashy 4-4 hook and doesn't connect. I feel like it's on cooldown nearly. <laughs> Bottom lane one did hit, but everyone since has missed. He is a flash Nautilus. <laughs> a flash Q Nautilus. Yeah, he's a flash Q Nautilus. See, I would prefer him to be a flash R Nautilus right yeah. now. Obviously, ult wasn't available that time. I yeah. know, not roasting Cupcake. Uh, but I Tally's do. an R Shen. <laughs> he is. He's R <laughs> Carbon. See, I mean, okay, if you're looking at a Shen, right, you want him to be an R Shen. Yeah, you don't like, want him to be a Tiamat Shen. Yeah, no. That's, that's a lot burnt from a legacy there that was... Flash being burnt by Cupcake, Flash being burnt by Claire, Flash being oh. burnt by Tally. All looking to try and pick up that kill onto Fantix. And Destiny. what were we talking about last game? Oh, sorry. What about oh, Fantix is caught. He's dead. Shut down for lost. Destiny's gone for the redemption. He didn't go for the Crucible. So everything I was commending him for has <laughs> gone out the window. out the window. Dude, Legacy look for a fight here. No mid laner. Carver's jumping on, on top of them. Shen's coming through. Standing Iron's is not going to oh, get him close bubble. enough. What Big bubble. bubble again. Destiny on point with his Nami so far. Legacy don't have a Shockwave available, but they're still chasing them down. Good damage from the Diwills propels the attack from Legacy. It certainly does. And the other thing it does is it just drags this game on. I mean, we keep talking about it, but when you're that far behind, Legacy, uh, sorry, Diwills are obviously looking for the objectives. And Legacy picking up picks just means that they get a little bit back. They get mid lane turret. Uh, sorry, wait. Now they're going to get potentially a Fire Dragon for themselves. I mean, every single time you get one of those picks, Diwills can do nothing and you take something very minor off the map. Although Fire Drake, as far as minor goes, oh. is the best. Blast Cone Baron attempt was being thought of by Diwolves. They pinged it out repeatedly, uh, but they decided not to go for the play. I mean, Fizz already having attack speed plus Blade of the Wrong King and Grave. Ooh. That's a quick Baron. I mean, King went for the Bork build this game. Yep. He switched it up. I think that last game, they just knew they had to end early. Yeah. And it's Lethality is the right build for that, right? Yeah. They're going again, but this has ping, pinged out by Legacy Hawk and shot. spotted out they by Hawkshot. They just Hawk got in shot. range, I don't think. That's going to fall down very quickly. Teleport from Tally from behind. So Legacy want to go for the fight, and Carbon is on the hunt. 2,000 gold. He's not close enough. It will be Baron picked up by the Diables. Exhaust onto the Rengar, and everyone from Legacy just getting destroyed so far. Oh! Wave connects. Hits three, but is it enough? It doesn't look like it at the moment as Lost is trying to kite out. Tally still alive. Eating so much damage as a big star 
one comes through for Fantix. Destiny, he's the one looking to try and clean up in the back lines. He says, whatever you can do, Cupcake, I can too. As a double kill secures the ace and Baron for the Direwolves. And another huge team fight where everything Legacy throws at the Direwolves, they just throw back a little bit better. Huge stun coming out of Fantix there. Probably saves the team fight because Ash Arrow just back off cooldown clips on one. And with Baron, with four members alive, Direwolves are going to look to push every lane. And Tally TP to that ward that's sitting in Direwolves' red buff. And then he bopped over the wall with the plant and just missed his taunt on Syndra. We talked about the, the stun from Fantix. It was absolutely phenomenal in that fight. If he if he landed the taunt on Fantix, maybe Fantix just dies. And then that fight is in the uh, complete opposite favor. So let's take another look at it. Let's watch what Ejim was talking about. All of a sudden, they go in, they get blown up. And that is a popped up yeah. Syndra. You cannot miss that taunt if you're expecting to win the final. Especially because a huge shockwave came out of Claire. And look how low Fantix was. If that yeah. taunt hits, he's 100% dead. Yep. Doesn't take part in the rest of the fight. And maybe in the three on three, Legacy get out ahead. But we keep going back to it. Individual outplays, better uh, target prioritization there. And Diwolves run away with it. And just with the way that fight plays out, if, if Fantix dies, then Tally can actually frontline for, for Cupcake, who is still yep. alive. I mean, sorry, lost. But. Just really impressed so far by Destiny's play there. In Every oh. single team fight, great bubbles, great tidal waves coming out from him. Evan Flo keeping his entire team alive. And one more time, the raid out of Direwolves. I mean, they thought that the squad was going to go down bottom lane, try and push Tally off the split push, which is what you generally do with Baron before you push the other two waves. Direwolves are like, we can sense that. No one's really at these turrets defending against the big creep waves. We're just going to walk bot uh, top lane, get something for free. And now 9,000 gold up. I mean, even a press R comp becomes very hard if no one dies on the initial R. If your win condition is just flashing in, burning all your ulties, and just blowing them up in a team fight, like, as your gold just gets further and further behind, like, you, you honestly just don't do enough damage at a certain point, so... It's looking pretty rough for Legacy at this stage. Need a really big shockwave from mm. Claire to pull this one back for Legacy, but Direwolves will continue to siege top side of the map. And with honestly, buff. even that becomes, like, very hard to execute on, because... Fantix is about to hit level 16, has three items, and whilst Claire is fishing for that shockwave, Fantix can just R him, and even if he doesn't kill him, he just forces him out of the team fight. And Claire, who's the last remaining pretty fed mumba. Do they go here? Cupcake looking Cupcake for the looking. engage. Oh. Incredibly low. Chippies will avoid oh. the arrow. Shockwave connects only onto the front line, but it's a flash away from Surefires. They do lock down Chippies. Cupcake picks up that kill, but Claire taking so much there damage. You go. Melts through absolutely everything. It's a one for one trade and Legacy have low health bars across the board. And that's what I was talking about. Fantix looked at Claire and Claire died. I mean, there was just no other way to put it. And now that they can push in. Oh, Carbon locked down by a bubble again. Big pickup for Fantix. Mid lane's going to fall. Inhibitor's going to fall next. And they've even got time to push top lane down. I mean, there's nothing left for Legacy. They can hold that. Oh, there's a hook. Cupcake. Keeps missing it. Yeah. He's also going Knight's Vow again. It's a bit... It's just interesting. I'm not really sure. I guess maybe the damage reduction into something like the Syndra, who's all single t single target, yep. just going to be looking to blow up Lost in a team fight, kind of smart. But uh, I don't know. It hasn't worked out for him two games in a row. There is a QSS picked up by a Lost here, but you can see in that last team fight, Fantix threw Oriana's shield Jones through barrier. Maybe caught here. That should be an easier hook. Oh, he's got to try and connect this one, though. Will Ooh. be able to do so through the wall. Ignite is ticking, tries to hop, skip, and jump away. But our legacy fast enough. Volley will slow him down. Trying to pick up the kill. <laughs> Riptide's not enough. Shurfire will get to take it down by the hook. Yeah, so finally he does fall down. Uh, that's one of those situations that Sherm pretty much played that as well as he could have. Yeah. As soon as he was caught there <laughs> taking Wolves, which was a greedy overstay, he was going to die. And uh, that just allows potentially Legacy to buy a slight respite to farm some side waves, but doesn't really get him back anything in the long run. Yeah. Dire Wolves are just all over him. They're 10,000 gold behind, though. Legacy's time to try and fight back is not right now. No, it certainly isn't. I mean, look how Fantix is 4,000, 3,000, 4,000 gold up. He's a full item and a bit. Oh, ahead. arrow. Destiny flashes away nice and easy. Lazy can't catch a break. Certainly can't. Carbon seems burns ult for it as well. Seems like every time Carbon jumps in, he's either exhausted or collapsed upon by five members yeah. of Die Wolves. But that's just their ulties again. They have no Ash Arrow. They have no... Well, I guess the Rengar ult's still, still going. Hard to run out. Oh, Carbon getting locked down again. There's oh. the ultimate coming out from Lost. Do they try and go for the fight? They don't. Tied away. Knocked oh, knocks bubble. up, Claire. Big bubble again for Destiny. He just never misses. It's not a skill shot. It's a targeted ability for this Nami. And the rest of Die Wolves looking to try and chase down Legacy. Tally 
will try and taunt himself away. Chippy says still hunting him down. The rest of Legacy already heading back to base. Huge minion wave bottom lane. And Chippy's is just being a nuisance at this point. And this is what I was going to talk about. They took the... Ooh, good There's flash. Flashes for Legacy. Forced the flash away. That minion wave, it's not going to get cleared out anytime soon. Yeah. And Legacy had the play to send Lost bottom lane and just take all that farm now because they over uh, go over aggressive. Look for the risky play. They're going to lose all their base. 12 seconds on clear. They're lucky they don't lose the game. Whew. Were you the guy, Jake, uh, that was saying Destiny's Nami wasn't very good before yep, the game? Yeah, certainly that was. Oh, okay. Mate, they forced him onto it. They obviously shared <laughs> the same <laughs> opinion. <laughs> oh, I just... The great thing about the Shoutcaster is when I get called out, I don't look bad. Unfortunately for Legacy, <laughs> it loses in the game. Oh. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, he certainly has shown up to play today. I think all of the Direwolves have. Destiny's been looking fantastic yep. for Direwolves so far. The rest of the Direwolves looking great as well. I mean, Surefire, even being, after getting taken down for first blood, he still was able to be an unstoppable force in the jungle here for the Wolves. Caught out Carlo multiple times and Tally not performing again on this show. Yeah, so... Baron coming up in 50 seconds, I think Dials are honestly just going to look to control the top side. They're going to push in. Bot and Hib, Min and Hib are just going to push by themselves naturally. Uh, Chippy's probably is going to group with them at this stage. Like, he probably can split, but uh, I think it's better to just end quickly. Legacy doing the weak side rush, looking for a bit of a pick. But. Yeah, I think what they were looking for is, like, no ward there, and maybe they yeah. can fly onto King and take him out before the Baron's respawning, but that's not going to happen. I mean, they, they can only be one point on the map right now. Yeah. Because no one's taking bottom lane. They're looking for that pick. They send out Carbon again. Cool. He's still got ulti. Tiles are wrapping around. Oh, picking our top lane it. turret. Dial was looking for that top lane turret. Do Legacy go for the flank now? I mean, potentially, because Fantix is forced onto the other side of the map as soon as they show. That is potentially a 5v4. Oh, Fantix is still very far oh. away. There's the Ash Arrow. Connects oh. on the Shurn Fire as Chippy's dodging a Cupcake. Moving forward, gets a knock up onto King. Delivers Shen, who misses the taunt again from Tally. Carbon really low, forced to back out. The Drop. fish is hunting on through. Diewolves have the whole wolf pack available now. They burst Ooh. through the front lines. Another big shockwave does it. nothing for Claire. And Carbon gets knocked down by another bubble. Diewolves pick up two kills and are pushing for the base. And that was a start of a 5v4. Fantix had to come from the other side of the map because he'd been zoned away by a Rengar ultimate. But still, Direwolves turn as a unit, are able to stall out the fight enough. And Ooh. now they can potentially break the base. Still 20 seconds on the captain and vice captain of Legacy. Top lane inhibitor turret is going to fall. Inhibitor shortly after. They've already lost one of their Nexus turrets. Direwolves look like they want to just continue pushing on forward. Chippies is on the turret. Lost Cupcake and Claire trying to do everything they can to defend this. But the Nexus is bare. There is no base left available for Legacy. Direwolves send this series into match point after picking up game two. I mean, 30 minutes? It went for slightly longer. But once again, that one just never seemed to be in question. Direwolves, after losing first blood, had complete control over that game. I think Legacy need to look to switch up their strategy. They're putting a lot of eggs in their bot lane's basket and they're picking the trundle, trying to gang for it, picking the Nautilus, trying to gang for it, and it just isn't working out. And then they, they just get into that situation where, like that, that whole last fight that just like lost legacy of the game, they were just forced into this situation where they have to force the team fight. And if they don't win it, then they're just gonna lose. They just committed too much. And the impressive thing to me is game one, the bottom lane, 2v2, outplayed. Pushed them in early, got the turret dive, yeah. beat the, uh, uh, won the game that way. Game two, they know that they're going to be under attack because Chippies has to burn teleport top. Mm -hmm. What do they do? They attack the teleport on the Shen and they win the game through macro. I mean, that's two games won, completely different ways. Were they still impressive micro? Sure, they looked fantastic across the board, but that is a macro decision that yeah. won Direwolves the game. And to beat Legacy at their game, <laughs> like attacking bottom lane, and then beat the macro as well, I mean, Unless you're Legacy, you don't have any calling cards left. And now Diawals are able to send this one to match point. Legacy have been in this position before last week. This is what they were up against against Sin before they picked up the reverse sweep. They've got to try and do it one more time. But for now, let's send it back to the analyst desk. Hey, Jubes. <laughs> well, there we have it. Legacy are now primed for that reverse sweep. And joining me here, we have a victim of that very particular reverse sweep, Jubes. How are you feeling, buddy? Do you think they get, they've got it in them? <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, look, guys, uh, T Gun and Mendrix also here. Let's talk about uh, Legacy V Diabolves in that game, too. And Juves, we were talking upstairs, and I feel like you, you were not not particularly keen on uh, on Legacy's drafts because yep. what have we been saying all split? Diabolves are maybe the best laning team in OS. And what are Legacy doing? They are picking losing lanes. 
I just don't understand it. I can yeah. understand you picking for like team fights and mid game, but you can't give Direwolves a team with like that much mechanics, that much raw ability, mm. like such power picks. So you give him Fizz, like a lane bully. <laughs> you give them Graves, like and pick Rengar yeah. to top it off. Like Graves abuses Rengar, mm. and then you give them like a good bot lane, and you pick like a tank engaged bot lane. Like you're pl- sure you're playing for mid game and late game team fights when you draw with the way Legacy's drafting, but you're not making it there. And it yeah. was evident in game one and now game two. Like if I'm Legacy. I, I just straight up pick for laning phase now. Mm. Like, I just pick lane bullies. Like, Claire can play Syndra. Well, they, they picked Rumble in game one. That didn't do well. He's a lane bully, right? Yeah, but Gragas has a good time into Rumble yeah, as well. Right, yeah. Like, it's not it's not just an out and out, like, Rumble's going to abuse. Like, yeah. Rumble will shove you in, sure, but but Gragas can do well into that lane. Mm. All right. Tegan? Uh, I, I agree, but I wouldn't move from Claire's Ariana. He's shown his mid-game ulti, his, his mid-game presence is there. It's just that since the rest of his team is behind, that he's not able to do as much. So mm. I do agree they should be picking more lane-oriented tops, lane-oriented bots, and definitely don't do Rengar into, into Graves again. It's just a basic well, bro, mistake. Sorry, break, break down to what, why does, why, what's the Rengar-Graves matchup and why does it go... So, I mean, we just saw... Yeah, like, yeah. But, but, <laughs> but break down why, why it plays out like that. So just keep in mind that Rengar got first blood that game. Yeah, he had yeah, long yeah. sword advantage. Yeah. But... Rengar can't clear. He gets down to like at least at, at max half HP on yep. full clear. Whereas Graves is 100% full. Yep. Graves can just take red buff, invade level 2 into your jungle and you have to leave because you can't get full ferocity. And he's you, just hunting at level 2, Rengar can't get full ferocity. Mm. So you can't win the 1v1 because Graves has too much consistent damage. Uh. And that pretty much happens the whole game. Right. Graves has too much damage and you're, you're too low from clearing jungle. And that's pretty much what happened that game. Like, uh, Shurnfire was two levels on Carbon. He yeah. was like level six to level eight. Yeah, and what are you going to do then? Carbon got first blood. Yeah, they even had a flash off of Graves, and he can still do it. Mm. Yeah. So I think it was pretty evident in that game. Just no matter how well you play, no matter what advantage you get, there's not a lot you can do as Rengar in that matchup. Mm. I mean, thematically speaking, when you look at that composition that Legacy's put together, it's it's great in its own right. It's got heavy engage. You've got engaged in your bot lane purely with the Nautilus Dredge line, with the Ash Arrow, especially with the, you know, especially with the Rengar Ultimate as well. So in terms of that, there are three champions that sort of facilitate that engage, and then two champions that help enable that even further with the shielding from Orion, the shielding from Shen, also delivering him into the team fight. It makes sense on paper. But the thing is that when you're going up against Dire Wolves, who are going to beat your lanes out, and then even when you do sort of try to force it, because they tried to do this a couple of times in the mid lane, Syndra just stopped it with one ball. Like there, are, there are cases when you just can't even let them get onto him. Well, if you want Nautilus to engage, he's got to hit them cues, right? I mean, that, that, that and, and we saw. I mean, no, I'm not, I'm not joking about this, right? Because the, the whole thing was like, hey, look, Legacy going to force Direwolves and Destiny onto picking, you know, a, a bad champion for their support player. But who looked more uncomfortable in that matchup then, right? Mm, I think like there was a few team fights that they lost off the back of missing flash hooks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Once you burn flash hook and once you burn follow flash follow ups, like you can't get out. And far be it from me to really criticize these players. <laughs> They're in the finals and I'm not. But that was that was a really play. poor. I'll, I'll throw a shot that, was, that was a really poor Nautilus game to watch. Yeah. He he missed almost every hook, almost every flash hook, and not only did he miss those abilities, but he also made poor choices. Yeah, where he could flash ulti instead of flash hook, mm. much more you know easy to engage to, to work with. So it just it just looked really really weird I, for him. I mean, you're watching these guys play. I mean, like. Do you think like Cupcake's just nervous, or what? What, what do you think's going on in his? It's brain? hard to say. I would say it's nerves because he's a much better player than, than what he's showing right now. Yeah. But you know, that's me making a lot of assumptions and me just hoping that he turns it around in the next few games, so I don't look very very <laughs> silly for my prediction. <laughs> uh, but that's all I can think because he looked so solid the whole season, even yeah. on off meta picks like Trundle, and now he's just being exposed. And yeah. there's nothing more to say about it. Yeah, and then you have a problem that really does come off that as well, is that it's not just them not misplaying. It's then Diwolves go, sweet, you don't have your hook, you don't have this, we're going to then land the bubble, we're going to land our CC, and then punish you completely for it. And then that's what just allowed them to just continue accumulating leads throughout the rest of the game. Absolutely. I mean, if that's Destiny's, like, weak champion, it's like... <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> what do you do? I, like, I'm all for playing niche. Yeah. Like, I love, like, a cheesy <laughs> pick here and there. But, like, there comes a point in time where you got to realize meta is meta for a reason. Absolutely. It's meta because it's strong. <laughs> pick your strong champs. Mm. Do it. <laughs> you're 2-0 two, you're two down. Pick the strong champs. Right. <laughs> well, I, I, I want to take a look at a specific replay that, I mean, I think we all know what it is. It's the first blood. And this is just Solstrax's giant brain. I mean, this is probably <laughs> pre-planned, right, Nedrix? <laughs> I would say it was pre-planned. I, I love the way Tally even sort of this is what's great about it. Telly sits there and he purposely takes more damage and see, he, he sort of like moves back and forth a little bit right there just to take a little bit of extra damage. So that just baits Shurnfire in that little bit further, 
really well done for them to execute on that. And then what makes it good about this is that it comes back to what Juve said before. It gets Rangar ahead. It puts him in a mm. position that maybe, you know what, he can deal with this with this grave Schoenfire jungle going into it. And it really is something that, you know, you thought it'd be sort of good. That I remember him turning to me specifically and saying, this is all right now for them to actually be playing but, Rangar into this situation. But what happens, Juve? I mean, after that, like, if you've got first blood as Rangar going into graves, what should you do then to maintain that lead? You just got to clear one side of your jungle, get level three. As soon as you hit level three, you have longsword advantage on yeah. graves, and you just want to run into him. Yeah. But make sure there's a bush there. <laughs> um, but I think that Carbon just got outpathed by Schoenfire that game. Because yeah. Schoenfire was f level five, and Carbon was level three. Yeah. So I don't know, like, where it went wrong, because the minimap wasn't actually on the jungle. But yeah. Yeah, it did go wrong. <laughs> uh, bouncing back to the level one instead of the jungle puff, I'm not so sure that the whole plan was to have Tally act as bait initially. I think it was just to collapse upon the red brush because you see the four plays coming in mm. on the other side and Tally just made a great play on his own, like a snap decision. <laughs> and, you know, I want to give Lucio all the credit. I, I love him. He's a great <laughs> bloke. But Big that brain. just seems like it was just Tally making the, <laughs> the perfect decision at the perfect time. Uh -oh. and, and I love... <laughs> Fun level ones like that, trust me. Uh, it was just, it was Big really, really cute. Take on the old GL, HF, invade, boys, invade, let's go. I, I, I let Flash you know all. that I want you to have some luck before I just run straight into you, all right? Special, we're invading. Hey, um, I also want to talk about, oh, oh, on the opposite end of the spectrum, in terms of bad plays for Legacy, let's take a look at this Baron fight, Mendrix, because, yep. I mean... They're just jumping in all over the place here, and uh, Die Wolves are able to defend uh, them trying to take this Baron. That's right, and really at this point in time, you think it is going to be Legacy's opportunity to make this happen, but they're completely jaded in terms of where everyone is at the moment. You know, they're trying to come in from two different angles, and automatically Die Wolves have great communication decision making. I mean, Juves goes in, oh, Juves goes in, sorry, first. I see Rengar, I remember you coming through. So, with that, there um, they do have Carbon going in first, and then immediately afterwards, he gets completely exhausted, shut down, deleted. There's only now three members going into mm. five. And from that point on, they've won the team fight. Doesn't matter how good your shockwaves are afterwards. And it was a good shockwave. But it's still going to be five on five on three. You don't have the damage to follow up afterwards, and they won the game. From so the in, in in terms of like pro play and comms at that point, like what's happening with Legacy? Are they just saying go in and they've mistimed it, or what's going on there? So <laughs> leading into a Baron in games like this, I know that for a fact. The team that's rushing towards the Baron, they're yeah. like they're doing Baron, they're doing Baron. Let's get there, get there, get there. The team that's on Baron. They plan for like what happens after Baron. You're standing in pit, so the call is finish it. Yeah. You're like, okay, finish Baron, finish Baron. What happens? And then it's like, okay, just kite back and like peel, do this, do that. Right, right. But the team that's running there is panicked, and they're like, okay, run there, run there, run there. So Die Wolves obviously there showed that they had a plan. They knew what they were doing. They all kited back. Mm. But that, but but like, I guess we're looking at that replay. It's it's, it's like. Le Legacy's TPing in, like, they're all going there. But they, if they'd waited, like, you know, 10, well, not 10 seconds, 5 seconds, right? Let Baron get low. You know, Carbon jumps in, maybe he smites, tries to steal that 50-50 Baron. And then they've got a better chance rather than just going one at a time and dying. Right, Mendrix? Or did, was that the right play for them? In terms of, okay, from what I'm saying, if they waited any longer there, they would have lost the Baron anyway. The, bar the Baron was pretty much gone. If you waited another 10 seconds to go in, the difference is, though, is that your whole team's there as a unit afterwards. And right. they've got the magic, re um, magic reduction shred on them. You then have the ability to sort of execute on your team composition. So if you decided in that situation, and again, it's hard, uh, as Juves was mentioning, because you're panicked and you're saying, get to the Baron, we need to get to ASAP. The problem that follows afterwards is, well, then now you're not able to ex execute on your co team composition. Get the team team fight that you want. Basically, drop the Baron, win the team fight. All right. Well, let's move on and highlight a specific player from that game. And I want to talk about Fantix because that mid lane just popping off. And uh, Mendrix, what really stands out to you with this? So one, he's got great um, team damage dealt there. He's actually definitely pulling his way by being above that 25% mark. Great KDA means he was able to avoid all of the engages coming through. And there were plenty of times that he did just great stuns with his balls, knock people back, stop the engages from happening. And he really was able to be there in those specific team fights as time went on. Another thing to note, and, and Juice was mentioning this before, he was actually 30 CS up at a particular point in time and then maintained that. And it does come down to the fact that, yes, Syndra is a great champion in that, right? But I think he was actually just continuing to play his role, role very well. Yeah, I mean, Jews, you don't know, uh, you guys love a bit of Syndra on Sin as well. So how much of that performance then was Syndra and how much of it was Fantix? Um, like, it was a great performance. He did what yeah. you meant to do on Syndra. Like, you pick Syndra to get priority around mid lane. And that's why they picked, like, Syndra Graves is unbelievable. You get priority around mid lane, you just invade, take, take, take Carbon's jungle, take the jungle, do what you want, really. Like, you have free reign over the map once you have priority in mid lane. Mm. And Syndra is, like, that ideal champion to do it. All right. Well, hashtag I am OPL is the Twitter hashtag you can get involved with via social media. And we are currently running also a uh, social media competition where you can win a Lenovo keyboard and mouse. 
sweet gear. Show us how you're watching the OEL final. You can tweet and also enter via Facebook. You've got to tweet some uh, photos, uh, presumably G-rated. I mean, look, I'd hope G-rated. I would, I, let's assume. I say presumably. I, I don't know the terms and conditions. I'm going to assume. I'm going to assume. Look, how are you watching it? Let us know via Twitter or Facebook. And uh, the top two most creative entries will win a Lenovo Legion keyboard. And also... What? Why are you looking at me like that, How Tiga? do you watch these games? Well, I don't know how you watch it, but generally when I'm watching <laughs> eSports, I'm in my underwear because that's how I live at home. He just comes out of the shower and he's like, <laughs> no pants, no problem. Yeah, exactly. No, I'm just... I come out of the shower. I'm like, I'm, I, obviously, I need to wash before I watch eSports. Obviously, right? Because I'm a filthy individual. I need to clean up. Second of all, I'm going to be as comfortable as possible. And for me, it's minimal... It's not important. I'm not coming to your house. <laughs> you weren't invited. Ever. No one's invited. He right, is let's... hosting an OPL viewing party, boys. <laughs> <laughs> you should see. As soon as we get out of this room, it's just shoop. No, it's not. All right. Let's let's before we move on to this because I am very quickly losing my job. Let us, um, <laughs> as if for a final time, let's talk about wins and losses because this is potentially match point for Die Wolves, right? So let's talk about for Legacy. Is there anything to take away from that second game in terms of improvement from the first uh, for them? As far as I'm concerned, you just look at pick ban yeah. and try and try and improve there. Mm, yeah, because it's uh, you're losing lanes all over the shop. Losing lanes everywhere. Tegan, thoughts? Um, I, I would look at pick ban, but also pat yourselves on the back a little bit because you still had a pretty poor duo lane mm. as far as picks go, and they held their own. So they are showing slight improvement from game to game. Sure. They just need to sort of kick it into high gear and get better setups. Mandrix, it was a longer game than the first game, so is that that's a positive, right? I guess you could say, you know, every every time you know a stat improves just a little bit, it is an extra positive on your back. But it does come down to what these guys are saying. Get some land priority somewhere. That way, you know, you give some options to carbon. That way, carbon can okay, you know what, that's fine. Shenfei, you can live in one part of my jungle because I'm going to live in your side of the jungle and then it's even from there. All right, so we're about to get out of this, but quick, quickly, just from you guys, I want to just get one champion you want to see Legacy pick going in uh, to this. A anything? Any ideas? I would love to see Claire pick... Like, Tegan likes Orianna, but mm. I'd love to see Claire pick up Syndra. Oh, yeah. Just, just bully mid lane. Mm. Like, show me you can do that. Get a solo kill. Do something. Excellent. Something that I'd like to see? Yeah. Blitzcrank. Well, yeah, but a real... Okay. <laughs> no, you didn't say that. <laughs> ah, sure. Good. Yeah. Magics? Uh, Ash Karma in the bot lane, actually. I'd love to see just a, like just full land priority down there. We know that these guys are great in terms of what they do. If not, Lucian Braun might as well do the oh, legacy man. special if it's not banned away. <laughs> All right. Well, it is time for us to get into our second game. So, Cars will be with you on the other side of these highlights. Into the Direwolf side the of the jungle. He's gonna have to flash away here because there's a Fizz Ooh. right behind. Ooh. Does he flash? He He's does. Oh. They go over. They go over. Shenfire, oh. take it down for first blood. And it's Carmen that picks up the kill. And Shun is not happy. If you saw the player cam, Shun was out of his seat nearly. You see Shenfire looking at that shit. Oh, That's a flash. He missed Ooh. again. Just old. Misses. Destiny still gets chopped up by Carmen. Throws out the ultimate. Carmen really, really low. King picks up a kill. And Legacy, they're falling like flies here as the Direwolves will collapse. 2,000 gold. He's not close enough. It will be Baron picked up by the Diables. Exhaust onto the Rengar, and everyone from Legacy just getting destroyed so far. Shockwave connects, hits three, but is it enough? It doesn't look like it at the moment as Lost is trying to kite out. Tally still alive, eating so much damage as a big stun comes through for Fantix. Destiny, he's the one looking to try and clean up in the back lines. He says, whatever you can do, Cupcake, I can too. As a double kill secures the ace and Baron for the Diables. And Cupcake looking for the engage, incredibly low. Chippies will avoid the arrow. Shockwave connects only onto the front line, but it's a flash away from Shurfire. They do lock down Chippies. Cupcake picks up that kill, but Claire taking so much there damage. You go. Melts through absolutely everything. It's a one for one trade, and Legacy have low health bars across the board. And there's the Ash Arrow. Connects oh. on the Shurfire as Chippies dodges it. Cupcake moving forward, gets a knock up onto King. Delivers Shen, who misses the taunt again from Tally. Carbon really low, forced to back out. The fish is hunting on through. Diwolves have the whole wolf pack available now. They burst through. The front lines. Another big shockwave does it. Nothing for Claire. And Carmen gets locked down by another bubble. Dire Wolves pick up two kills and are pushing for the base. And Dire Wolves look like they want to just continue pushing on forward. Chippies is on the turret. Lost Cupcake and Claire trying to do everything they can to defend this. But the next is bare. There is no base left available for Legacy. Dire Wolves set this series into match point after picking up game two.